the existential sound nanak's we nanak says that which is cannot be given any name all names are given by man omkar is the only name that is not given by anyone ram krishna allah are all the names given by men of different sects the only name that is not given is omkar because this is the existential sound and why this name omkar man is constant checkerboard thoughts keeps on floating on the inner sky certainly waves keep on arising on the surface when thoughts are no more waves have subsided and emerged in the ocean and you drown in your innerness only then you can hear a mystical sound this sound is uncreated no one has created this sound it is the sound of existence now nasa scientists say that as the sun moves there is a sound and they have identified this sound to resemble that of hindu sound om no one has created this sound this is the sound of the existence this is the echo of the existence omkar is the way of existence this name is not assigned by anyone and it is not a word it is a sound not only an ordinary sound instead it is unique as well without any sound uncreated this remains hidden in the existence look at the sounds all sounds are created by friction by friction a musician vibrates the strings of the instrument and thus creates a sound this sound is created because of the friction between the strings and the finger the river flows the sound arises through the flow this is the sound created when water strikes the shore you sit by the waterfall there is a sound a very relaxing sound water falls on the rock a sound is created this is the sound of the waterfall breeze blows and rustling is passes through the leaves rustling is the sound created between the breeze and the trees we speak singer sings all duality vanishes a sound continues to echo when all duality vanishes a sound continues to echo this sound is of home remember home is not the world each language be it hindi sanskrit or punjabi has a special letters to represent the sound it is science says electricity is the root of the entire existence science revolves around the trinity of electron proton and neutron accordingly if you go on dividing the entire existence to reach a solitary unit then we will obtain electricity or electric energy the ultimate search of science is electron science says that entire existence is composed of electricity but the scientists even the sound is composed of electrical energy and the root of everything is electrical energy this is objective science is outward journey the search of mystic is subjective mystic has reached the very core of the existence by uniting the discordant elements that constitute the creation by uniting the entire sense organs mind 
he attains to oneness. By uniting various individual minds, one attains to cosmic mind. The difference is very insignificant, yet is still it is not. The science existence is composed of electrical energy, and for the mystic, the entire existence is composed of sound energy. Science reached to this conclusion through an objective analysis, and mystic has reached to this conclusion through a subjective analysis. To science, sound is a form of electricity, and to mystic, electrical energy is another form, form of sound energy. The difference is not so big. It is like two different persons with different level of understanding and frame of mind are looking at a glass half full. One sees it as half full and the other sees it as half empty. The object is the same. One object, however, people with different frames of understanding are looking at situation and the outcome is two different conclusions. The search of science differs from that of mystics. The way of science is that of dissection and that of mystic is unification. Mystic or the religion moved from many to one and when discordant elements are united, oneness happens. In that oneness, meditation attains fusion as Samadhi and something echoes as the pulse of cosmos. When we look at various messiahs or the messengers, Holy Prophet went on the mountain and he meditated. And in that he attained to oneness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Vyas did the same thing. He went into a state of trance and there he attained to oneness. In that oneness meditation attains fruition. It becomes the ultimate. And something echoes as the pulse of the cosmos. This echo is discovered both within and without. He finds the echo like the dissolving notes of an enchanting melody. Everything seems to be dissolving in that sound. Something this, something like this has never happened before. Bemused, dazed, he finds no one creating this sound. Yet still it is there. He knows not the source. Suddenly something dawns. A realization happens. Awareness comes. He understands this sound is not created by any friction. Not created sound. It is uncreated and this is known as the uncreated sound. Or nad means sound. Anhad means that which is not created, that is beyond all boundaries or dualities. Had also means boundary, that which is beyond all boundaries. Nanak says this is Omkar. This is the only authentic name of that which is. Nanak calls this as Nam. And again, again, again and again he uses the word Nam. Remember, whenever Nanak uses the word Nam, he refers to God or Creator or the Rub as he calls it. And says that alone is truth, that alone is existential. He says, one who drowns in this remembrance of the word will certainly appear. Nanak is referring to this existential sum as Ek Omkar. And this alone is truth. Each time Nanak uses this word, it refers to that existential sum. The sound is very important.
try to understand this when you chant the word Ram a stage comes in the process when the word disappears and only the sound remains the sound of letter M resonates with the sound of the letter M in Omkar the word Omkar has three sounds the sound of A, U and M the sound A resembles the syllable the last syllable of the word Brahma the creator that's how things are created this sound energy creates evolves the second sound U resembles with the last syllable of the word of the Hindu deity Hindu trinity Vishnu this is the energy that preserves and sustains and lastly the sound of this level M it resonates with the sound of another name of Shiva Maheshwar in this sound the other two sounds dissolve to attain a state of meditativeness or oneness even a lifelong is not enough to understand the essence of this existential sound and even one moment is enough for this experience only the grace of the master is needed says an ecstatic man I can explain this through a Tibetan Sutra the only country in the world which has devoted all its genius to the inner exploration its findings are of tremendous value there is a particular Tibetan mantra Om Mani Padme Hum is one of the most beautiful expressions for the ultimate experience its meaning is sound of silence the diamond in the lotus the sound of silence the diamond in the lotus science silence also has its sound in music the outer ears cannot hear so the so too the outer eyes cannot see it we have six outer senses in the past man knew only five senses sixth sense is a new discovery it is inside your ears as a result people fail to recognize it it is the sense of balance when you feel giddy or when you see a drunkard walking it is the sense of balance that is affected just as six senses are used to experience the outer exactly the same six senses exist within to experience the inner to see it to hear it, to feel it to feel its utter balance, its beauty it is invisible to outer eye but not to the inner you cannot touch it with your outer senses but the inner sense are absolutely immersed in it Om is the sound when everything disappears from your being no thoughts, no dreams, no projections, no expectations not even a single ripple your whole lake of consciousness is simply there, silent too. It has become just a mirror. In those rare moments, you hear the sound of silence. It is the most valuable experience because not only it shows a quality of your inner music, instead it shows the inner being is harmony, joy and blissfulness all this is implied in the silent music that which is existential you are not to see it 
if you say it, you will miss the real thing. You have to hear it. You have to be utterly calm and quiet and then suddenly it is all around you. Like a very subtle dance or like a subtle melody. And the moment you are able to hear it, you have entered into the inner secrets of existence. And this is what happened to all these mystics. You have become so subtle that now you deserve all the mysteries to be revealed to you. Existence waits till you are ready. Masters, matters not how long does it take or how long you have to wait. In the East all the religions without exception agree on this point that the sound which is heard in the final it is the highest peak of silence something similar to Om or what Nanak calls a temple. The word Om is not written alphabetically in any language of the East because it is not part of the language. It is written as a symbol and the same symbol is used in Sanskrit, Pali, Prakrit, Tibet, Tibetan, Hindi, Gurmukhi with slight variation in its writing style. All the mystics of the ages <coughs> All the mystics of the ages have reached to the same experience that is not part of our mundane world. Hence, it should not be written in letters. It should have its own symbol which is beyond the language. It does not mean anything as far as mind is concerned, but it means tremendously much as far as your spiritual growth is concerned. It is not part of the language of grammar. That which is beyond mind is not part of the language, is not part of grammar. It is concerned with your being, your inner sanctum and your spirituality. All music, particularly classical music, has been trying to catch the sound of silence so that even people who have not entered into their beings can experience something similar. But similar cannot be seen. It is a very far away echo. Even the greatest musician has to use sounds. But howsoever beautifully he arranges them, he cannot be absolutely silent. He gives gaps of silence simply. The whole play of music is between sound and silence. Those who do not understand hear the sounds. Those who understand, those who understand the essence hear the silence as the gaps between two sounds. The real music exists in the sound. Silence is not created by the musician. Musician creates the sound and leaves the gaps as a contrast so that you can experience something of what happens to the music in his inner world. The musician is creating sounds and leaves the gaps in a contrast so that you can experience something of what happens to a mystic in the inner world. Om is one of the great achievements for the seekers of truth. There have been cases which are absolutely unbelievable, however these are historical. There was a Tibetan mystic called Marpa. When he died, his closest disciples were sitting all around him because the death of a mystic is as tremendously valuable as his life and perhaps even more. If you can be close to mystic when he, his consciousness is leaving the physical body, you can experience many things. 
because his whole consciousness is leaving the body. And if you are alert and conscious, you can find a new fragrance. You can see a new light. You can hear a new music. However, we do not understand the mysteries of the solution of consciousness into existence. We call this death and lament when consciousness is leaving the body because it is entering into bodiless realm. When Mahapa died, he was living in a temple and all his disciples became suddenly surprised. They looked all around to find where the sound of Om is coming. And finally they realized that it was not coming from anywhere. Instead it was coming from Mapa. They heard it by putting their heads to his feet, to his hands. And they could not believe it. Instead his whole body was a vibration. They could not believe. Inside his whole body there was a vibration creating the sound of home. He had been hearing this sound for his entire life since he became enlightened. The moment Mapa became enlightened he began to hear this sound throughout his life. And now all those who were around him had been hearing this sound. Because of his constant inner experience of the sound, the sound has entered even his physical body and cells. Every fiber of his body had learned a certain synchronicity and the same wave, same wavelength is happening now. And the same is now heard by all those gathered around. I had the experience to witness such occasions several times when the Masters were entering back into existence. It is indeed a benediction. But it has been experienced with other mystics as well. The inner starts radiating, particularly at the moment of death when everything comes to a crescendo. The man is so blind and so utterly unintelligent, knowing that mystics experience this music of silence within them, they call it as Om. However, people start repeating this sound as mantra, thinking that by repeating they will be able to hear the pulse of existence. By repeating you will never be able to hear it. Your mind is functioning when you are repeating it. But perhaps I am probably one of the few to tell you this. And for centuries people have been teaching repeat Om and the Kogmaya. This creates a false experience and you can be lost in the false and you will never discover the truth. I emphasize repeating is not going to help you in any way. Simply be silent and try to listen to it. As your mind becomes calm and quiet, suddenly you will become aware. Like a whisper, this sound is arising within your being. When it arises on its own, it has a totally different quality and it has capability to transform you. Even modern physics says that everything in the world is composed of electrical energy. According to modern physics, even sound is something but is nothing but electrical waves. The physicists have been working from outside and the mystics have been working from inside. In the East, this has been known for centuries. They have be, there has been musicians who try to create by their music of flame on which an unlit candle can light. As the music falls over the unlit candle, suddenly the flame arises. It was a test in the ancient days that unless the musician could create light, fire or flame, with his music, 
he was still a mature. The explanations of physics and mystics look different, but perhaps there is some deeper source which can withdraw the contradictions and opposition. Perhaps it is only a different interpretation because the mystic is coming from inside and the physicist is looking at the outside. The Sufis do not use the whole name of Allah. They use the sound Hu. And slowly and slowly they change Allah Hu into simply the sound of Hu. They have found that the sound Hu strikes exactly at the life source just below the navel. You are, you are connected with life with your mother from the navel. Just below the navel is the source of your own life. Try. When you say who, the hit is below the navel. Who is a Sufi discovery? And whom is the Tibetan way? Who seems to be a little more, a little harsh? whom on the other hand seems to be a little softer but softer will take a longer time to wake up your energies. It is possible that in a particular climate of Tibet the softer may be perfectly good. They did not need such a harsh sound in order to hit the light source but harsh desert of Arabia. Sufi mystics had to use the harsh sound who. who is better than whom? In the colder heights of Tibet, whom is perfectly right? Whom is the hit to create this existential sound in you? If you hit the seed of your life, it starts disappearing in the soil and the green leaves sprouts start growing. Between the two sounds of Om and Hum is Mani Padmi. In Tibetan Sutra, I do not think anybody has been able to express the ultimate experience, the ultimate beauty better than Mani Padmi. Mani Padmi Hum. You have to visualize it. The lotus flower in the east is most beautiful and it is considered as the mystical flower. And if you put diamonds on the lotus in the early morning sun, you will have a tremendously beautiful experience. The lotus flower with diamonds. It is very difficult to say anything about the ultimate experience. However, Tibetan mystics have tried their best. Many things have been said about it, but diamond in the lotus seems to be the best expression. It is the most beautiful and the ultimate experience. They have chosen two most beautiful things of the ordinary world, the lotus and the diamond. It is just a visual expression of the beauty that you come to see within yourself. The Sutra Om Mani Padme Hum has a whole philosophy within its womb. To start with Hum, the last word, and the first will arise on its own accord. And when your inner being is filled with the sound of silence, you will have the beautiful experience of seeing lotus with diamonds in the early morning sun. The diamond is radiating, the lotus is so soft, so feminine, and so delicate. It has no comparison in any other flower. It became so important to the mystics. You have, must have seen Gautam Buddha's statue sitting on a lotus. They have, they are showing symbolically that he has reached the ultimate, his own inner lotus has flowered and not only the lotus has flowered the diamond hidden behind it 
as it opens its petal, you find the diamond, the most precious one. Diamond has a quality. That is why it has been chosen. It is a symbol of eternity. Diamond is forever. It knows no death. It is immortal. The experience is beautiful and eternal. But unfortunately, Tibet has fallen into darkness. Its monasteries have been closed. Its secrets of truth have been forced to work in labor camps. The only country in the world which was working in a one-pointed genius, all its intelligence in search of one's own interiority and its treasures have been forced to stop by the communist invasion of the world. Nowhere has such concentrated effort has been made to discover man's own being. Every family in Tibet used to give their eldest son to some monastery where he was to meditate and grow closer to awakening. It was a joy to every family that at least one of them was full-heartedly, 24 hours a day, working on inner being. They were also working, but they could, could not devote their entire time. They had to create food and clothes and sell, shelter, and Tibet is a difficult in Tibet, it is a difficult matter. The climate is not very helpful. To live in Tibet is a tremendous struggle. But still every family used to give their firstborn child to the monastery. There were many monasteries like this, but they were all destroyed. Now let me take how did Nanak reach to that experience. Ekonkar is the oneness that Nanak experienced when he disappeared for three days in the Buddha and appeared in front of the Buddha. This, is, this was the commune with his beloved. First Nanak drowned in the river, ego vanished as it dissolved in inner oneness, union happened. And when Nanak emerged from that, his first message was Ekonkar Satya. Understanding dawned. The message of this experience overflowed as Japji. Japji is the eternal message of Nanak. It is the pulse of the existence that is now being revealed as Japji. The message completes so is the search of lives. This is the nature of this experience, Ek Pongkar Nana continues. And then the other words, it is important, how did it happen? How did Nana reach to that state? I will take that and then go back on that meaning. It happened one day, it was a cold winter night of the dark fortnight. Nanak was sitting on the bank of the river along with his disciple Bala and Mardana. Nanak had two disciples, Bala and Mardana. One was Hindu, the other was Muslim. Suddenly Nanak took out his clothes Bala wanted to know what Van Mardana, what is he doing? The night is cold. He entered into the river. The river was cold. They asked, what are you doing? Nana did not say anything. And he entered the river. The river being that flowed in the outskirts of the village where he lived. Mardana thought that Nanak will go and take a dip and come back soon. Time flowed on. 
Nanak did not emerge. Mardana got worried. He started sprinting on the bank of the river, calling out, Where are you? Answer. But there was no reply from Nanak. Time flowed. Nanak did not emerge. Mardana got worried. He ran to the village. People have loved Nanak. The flower has not blossomed as yet. But the bud has its own beauty and fragrance as well. The beauty of the bud is unique. And so is the beauty of the flower and its fragrance. That is why we use the buds as the symbol of symbol of uniqueness. People gathered, they searched the whole river, but they did not found, find Nanak anywhere. They thought either Nanak drifted or some animal has eaten him. Disappointed, saddened, they returned to the village. This, it says that three days after Nanak emerged from river bay, and a Konkar was his message, a Konkar Sapna. And this is the Mool Mantra in Sikh religion, a Konkar Sapna, Karta Puruk, Nirbhav Nirbhav, Akal Murat, Ajuni Sabhav, Gurparsar Jai. Ek Onkar Satnam, that is existential, the uncreated sound, the only doer, Karta Puruk, the only doer. And what is his qualities? The next part explains his qualities. Nirbhav, fearless, nirbhav, without any prejudice, nirbhav, nirbhav, beyond time and space, Akal. and born out of his own free will. Not born through male-female relation, Ajuni Samhang. And how one can attain to this state of awareness? This is the state of awareness. These qualities that one needs to inculcate within. You have to experience that which is unborn within you. Ajuni Samhang. There is something that enters in you and which is not born out of the male-female relation. Your body comes into existence as an interaction between ovum and sperm, but not that which enters the body. That is Ajuni Sama. And that which is, that knows that there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. That which is beyond all dualities. That is that knows very well that we are all part of this entire existence. Sabna Jiya Kaigdata Sumadhi He is the master. He is the creator of the entire existence. The one that created the left hand and the right hand is the same source. Then how can there be a Fearless. Only if you know that we are part of one synergistic harmony and this has been your experience, then there will be no conflict between you and me, between you and the other person. In the absence, this will remain your way of life. You will continue to be living your life out of fear and all kind of other things. The other will remain other, not as the part of one synergistic thing. And that's how the Mool Mantra goes. Three days after, why there is three days in this story, and I call this as a story, because in a way the story indicates something more sublime and deeper. Because that which is cannot be put into the words, we have to use in symbols. To speak about it in symbols. 
that is why there is a story and another thing is this human mind hangs around the stories and anecdotes so religions have mystics have created many parables codes hakus story to explain that which cannot be explained in the ordinary words and this story has three days it always happens the process of death takes minimum three days to complete that's why there is a mention of three days in this story that three days after nanak remembers and during that three days he appeared in front of his beloved but everyone must disappear whether you disappear on the mountain or the cave or the river or anywhere when meditation happens one disappears in an unknown he becomes useless for the outer world and when he encounters the ultimate what he speaks cannot be understood by others persis comes like a desert to him this is what happened to holy prophet mad or mystic what happened to him then he could not understand that whether we ask when this experience happened he requested when you are giving me such a beautiful experience to know why can't it be made available for the humanity to come jesus all these mystics the ego dissolves ego is the force it takes 3 days minimum to dissolve that is why there is mention of 3 days and when after 3 days nanak emerged from the river his first words were ekon ka satnam that which is is one no name can encompass that which is it is so vast and magnanimous that no name can encompass this beyond human imagination and that is the uncreated sound no one is creating that yet is still it is there and that alone is the truth that alone is hak ekon ka satnam the entire sikh religion is encompassed in these three words that which is is one uncreated and that alone is true truth is one uncreated no one creates it it is there only thing you have to discover it deep within you cannot discover it anywhere outside that i am going to look in this book or that book you have to look deep within into your being the scripture that has been given to you after that whatever he said is an explanation and there are total 38 different sutras and each sutra is complete in itself in some he talks about the cosmic law and everything happens because of this law nanaka calls this as the existential law 